Lion L. Johnson. Primarch of the First Legion. Son of the God Emperor of Mankind. Today I will show you how to paint his skin. Oh wait. Crap, sorry, wrong lion. No, I I'm gonna paint this guy. Hello, and welcome to what is my most requested video so far. Uh, let's just get this out of the way. I did not record the paints. I'll put the names of them on screen, and I'm going to try to talk you through the process of painting this lion fur uh, that I did for this guy. I do want to apologize for um, the quality in the beginning. I am trying to... Uh, actually sell some of these guys and take commissions to get a better camera so you can see what's going on. I promise this does not last long. I went through this part pretty quickly. So what we're trying to do here is just get an all over base coat. I don't thin the paints too much. Um, whenever I'm painting skin or things like that, I thin it actually very little in the beginning and the paint gets thinner uh, the closer I get to the end result. Now we do want to leave little areas like under the pecs and under the eyes black uh, and I'll show you why. It's a, it's a good way to start your darkest shadows and I'll show you how to blend those in the next step here. Alright, so this whole process is really just a rinse and repeat of the same steps. And this is step two of the process. What we want to do is create a glaze with the paint that we used before, the whole red. And we want to create a glaze that is not quite a wash, but also thinner than a layer paint. And we want to put that absolutely everywhere. We want to pull from the shadows to the highlighted areas that we've made so far and that's going to thin those transitions and soften them from the dark shadows to what will be our shadow color. And you'll see how that plays in a little bit later. Also keep in mind this is not a wash. We're not washing this miniature. We're intentionally pulling pigment from a dark area to our lighter area so don't just flood it. All right, now we're going to take our whole red and we're gonna mix it with an orange, uh, a darker orange. I'm using a lot of paints from the AK Interactives line. Um, by all means, you do not have to go and purchase these paints to achieve the same sort of effect. Just use a similar paint. Uh, it's a dark red, or a dark orange rather, um, and you just mix them 50-50 and you go in and you start layering. Now we're going to want to layer over most of that whole red that we put down. That is our shadow color. So layer inside of it, but get rid of most of it. I would also like you to notice that I am not making smooth brush strokes here. Um, I am making more of a sketching motion with my brush and that is because we're going for something uh, related to fur um, and even skin in general. Skin is not a smooth surface. If you look at, at your skin, uh, it's a very uneven texture and so I think that I get a better result regardless of painting fur or skin when I don't go for perfectly smooth and I blend it later. Now, when painting skin or fur or anything really, um, you want to keep in mind that you want to highlight the muscles individually as a whole. 
and I'll explain what I mean by that. When I start this arm, my light source is over this shoulder. So the brightest point of these muscles is going to be right up there at the top where my brush is now. So I'm highlighting that area the brightest and the top of these muscles the brightest while keeping in mind where my highlight is coming from so that all of the light starts from that area and gets brightest there. And I will give you just a minute's break from my voice. This is just a rinse and repeat. We pull from the shadows to the highlights with a thinned down version of the mix that we made before. All right, we have now made it to deep brown or your dark orange. Um, really the key to painting this way is patience. It is going to take, I think this whole thing has six or seven layers worth of skin on it and that's not including going back in and deepening some of the shadows and adding some more color for interest. It takes time. You've got to trust the process. You cannot get frustrated halfway through it. Right now, this lion looks goofy. I completely understand that. If you trust the process and you keep repeating these steps, you will get to a result that you love. This miniature and other miniatures like it are for sale. Um, the best way to contact me is through my Instagram, which is also the best way if you want something commissioned. Uh, like I said, everything at this point is going toward a new camera so that these videos can get better and closer and sharper. Uh, so if you would like to help with that and pick up one of these miniatures that you like, get a hold of me on Instagram. Now I want you to notice that while I'm doing this, I'm making little scratch marks that do appear in the shadow areas. I'm going to do that throughout, um, and that just goes back to the irregularity of skin and fur. It's not perfect, so imperfections help sell the effect that it is an organic material. All right, now we're gonna start working in our first highlight layers. And for that, I turn to, as the screen said, AK Interactive Sand Yellow. Um, I chose yellow because it's going to keep the warm skin tone that I've been working with so far, going from orange to yellow. And if we add orange in very slowly, it's not gonna get chalky on us. So the real trick here is to add it in a little bit at a time so that it can build up slowly. If you go too fast, you're going to end up with a chalky effect. As we push further and further into the highlights, you have to start picking and choosing where you're placing your highlights, uh, where it would make sense. And we have to cheat this a little bit <clears throat> because we know where our light source is coming from. 
However, in order to draw people's eyes to the miniatures, you want the brightest part of the miniatures, specifically the skin, to be the head, chest, and shoulders so that it draws the eye up toward the face. Now I know the question that you're asking yourself at this point is why am I painting in the bottom third of the screen for this entire video? And the real answer for that is because um, I'm not good at camera. Alright, I specifically wanted you to see me paint this leg because you can clearly see what I'm talking about when I say make little scratches inside the shadow areas. Um, and it does give it a more organic feel, especially when it's blended. Nothing has to be perfectly smooth because nothing organic is perfectly smooth. Now we're going to do a glaze again and I want you to notice that we're not completely eliminating shadows. We're pulling from mid-tone to highlight. We want to soften transitions, not get rid of them entirely. Alright, we are now working on our actual highlights. There will be two stages of this. Um, these are the first stages of highlights and this is where you want to become very selective. You want to paint in very small areas that you want to be bright and pop out and catch the eye, such as shoulders, face, and chest. So we're going to, and a little bit goes a long way. You don't have to cover areas anymore. You're just picking out small highlight areas to draw attention. And remember where your light source is from. That's very important while doing this. Now I wish I could show you uh, how to apply this highlight over the entire miniature because this highlight is what really makes the difference. Unfortunately, um, as you may have noticed with most of this video, I recorded it in the very bottom of the screen and I was concentrating so I was way up in this poor mini's personal space, uh, which means that most of it was painted out of focus and just completely out of frame. Uh, I will have this fixed before the next video.
Alright, now when we glaze this, because we will, like I said, rinse and repeat, I want you to notice I'm no longer even going from mid-tone to highlight. I am glazing just outside of that last highlight area. I'm barely leaving the highlight area. All I want to do is just barely soften that transition. I don't want to pull all the way from mid-tones or shadows. I just want to go barely outside that last layer that I put down and soften that transition just slightly. And so we've made it to our last highlight. We're going to mix in just a little bit of ice yellow to keep the warmth and also up the brightness. We are going to highlight in very, very small areas using little scratches. You can easily overdo it on this step. So you just want to highlight a little bit, step back, see what it looks like, highlight a little bit more, step back you want to do this gradually in steps so that you don't overdo it Just like with the last highlight, you want to put a little bit of paint on the miniature, step back, take a look, make sure everything looks like you want it to, and then continue applying. It is extremely easy to overdo it. I also want you to notice, now that we're doing the highlights, there is significantly less paint on the brush. Even in the last pass of paint that we did, there's a lot less paint on the brush than when we were doing our mid-tones and our shadows and I'm just barely touching the model with the tip of that brush. I'm looking for very, very fine brush strokes so that I can put that paint exactly where I want it. Alright, now we're going to bring the shadows back. We've worked up to a nice highlight and you can by all means stop right here. But we want to glaze some of the shadows back in just to provide a little bit more contrast and a little bit more interest when you're looking at it. It's really easy to overdo the brights and this is one way to bring the whole model back down just a little bit darker and make it more interesting to look at. Now I do want you to see that we are not getting rid of the mid-tones. I am simply glazing into areas that should be darker based on where my light source is coming from. I want to keep the mid-tones, I just want to make a few areas, a select few areas, a little darker and more interesting to look at.
Now, first of all, I want to thank you guys for hanging out and watching this tutorial. If you have any questions that I did not cover, please drop them in the comments and I will do my best to help you out. Um, just like this guy, a lot of the miniatures I paint are going to be for sale on my Instagram. So if you're interested in purchasing this guy or perhaps commissioning something, the best place to get a hold of me is there. Uh, I think that's about it, you guys. Uh, you bring back in the shadows, and if you follow this guide step by step with paints adjacent to the ones that I've showed you, or even the ones that I've showed you, you may come up with a result that looks a little something like this.